Mobile Tech RX, the app that helps you make more money. Don't forget to grab your Magnatech mat, available at most PDR tool distributors. Happy New Year, everybody. This is episode 252. We are PDR Tool Time. I am Vince D'Alessandro, along with John Renstrom. We do not have the other two cohorts here with us this uh, week. They are still up in the mountains or down by the beach enjoying their new year. Yeah, how, did, how does that work out? One of them's clean up in the mountains in the snow and the other's on the beach, and you and I are sitting in our offices on computers? Yeah. How did that happen? Well, that's that's because we're... Uh, we're, we're what are we? What are we doing? What's that whole COVID thing? What are we supposed to do? We're isolating. <laughs> yeah, we're 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 social distancing. Yes, or as I call it, Monday. Monday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, how was your New Year's, John? Well, <laughs> it's too early to say because we're recording this before New Year's. Right. But I had a great Christmas. How was your Christmas? Christmas was great. Uh, we did take a little break, so actually, we haven't talked yeah. about our Christmas at all. Uh, it wasn't the greatest ever. It wasn't what I had planned. Uh, I was supposed to be in Chicago for Christmas, mm. but uh, people close to us here in Texas came down with the COVID, with the vid, and uh, we were quarantining <laughs> and to the best of our ability. And Say that uh, yeah. same for us, uh, close friend. So coming down with COVID, so we had to quarantine. There's the answer, right? The other two knuckleheads are in the mountains and at the beach, and we're quarantining. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be in quarantine through New Year's as well. But, you know, my wife and I are used to um, being together. So we've completed a bunch of house projects. So we actually put together, uh, we had to dig out all the parts, our 10-year-old Xbox 360. Oh, nice. <laughs> and fired that puppy up. And that's what we did all day Christmas Day. Oh, wow. Um, other than shower our cats with new fresh new cat toys that's pretty cool <laughs> that is good uh what we do we well we hung out with uh the dyers uh and a couple other uh friends of uh that we've made in texas and but our quarantine was up on christmas day so that's why we were nice. uh, able to do things but i wasn't able to go to chicago for christmas which yeah. you know that was the plan was to go see my my family in chicago yeah how's your mom doing She's good. She just turned 83 a week and a half ago. I'm sorry, 82 a week and a half ago. And uh, she's a little bit fearful of the whole COVID thing, but uh, <laughs> I would have felt devastated if I brought something to her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my dad called me on the 23rd, let me know he tested positive for COVID. Now he's 73. Mm -hmm. uh, he's like, yeah, it was, feels like a stomach bug to me, but... Yeah. Uh, my stepmom, his wife, though, suffers from strokes. So he's yeah. taken a lot of extra measures, cleaning the house, cleaning up around everything. Yeah. Uh, but he does all the shopping, everything. So Lord only knows where he was when, when he acquired it. Exactly. So. And it's just, it's just the freak thing. You don't know. I've been around people that have been infected like with COVID, and I haven't gotten it. So yeah. I don't understand it, but... Uh, I, it is what it is, and I would not take that, you know, and so I don't want to take it lightly. You know, there's people that uh, get really sick, and there's people that not so sick. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so exactly. I know people that just have, uh, you know, sinus infection symptoms, and others are going to the hospital to get trans, uh, was it, inf uh, blood transfusions. So, wow. Huh. Well, that brings us all the way into New Year, yes. you know, and, and, you know, with any kind of luck, we're going to see some sort of drastic change on that sort of front. Um, I tell you, though, man, if I had one hope for the New Year, and that's that uh, we get to keep um, the restrictions from outside visitors. Uh, <laughs> and what I mean by that is as a, as a hail guy, I had a banging year for me. It was a great, great year. Uh, I think Australia, uh, Europe, you know, you guys, if, if you keep all the foreigners and that, you know, in their case, that would be me yeah. um, out. I mean, that, that allows us to do wonders with pricing and uh, maintain some integrity in our pricing. Now, John, have you ever traveled overseas for hail or out of the country? No, I never had a reason to, I got invited yeah. several times, oh, but sure. I, I, I didn't go. Most of the people that I know, it turned into a working vacation. Yeah. And sure. uh, that's great. It's a good idea. 
except I don't want to ruin my vacation with fixing cars. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd rather just go for fun. Yeah. Uh, th- so. They called that stepping on your D word, right? Yeah. I'm not going to say that word because we're a PG 13 rated <laughs> podcast. Uh, yeah. So the reason why that brought me to a point, because while we were talking about isolation and uh, uh, quarantining and stuff like that, John and I were from, we're generation X. We are gen Xers, yeah. right? Yep. We, yep. who was more designed, who was designed better to withstand isolation and quarantining than gen Xers? Well, you kind of have a point there. You know, um, we were the first generation to get the video game. Right. So, I mean, how many of our generation sat alone in their rooms for weeks at a time playing the original Nintendo Duck Hunt? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna if I can shoot that stupid dog. <laughs> <laughs> or even before that, we had Pong. You know. Yeah. We had two little uh, dashes and a dot. <laughs> two dots and a dash going yep. across our screen, right? And that kept <laughs> us entertained for hours by ourselves, right? Yeah. So, yeah, you know, because our our parents generation, the boomer generation, they come out of the end, you know, basically from the what was considered the greatest generation, the the World War II uh grandparents. And uh so the the heavy social interaction, the uh, the large family gatherings, and actually we had a a discussion about this with my aunt um over Christmas. The uh, the large family gatherings don't really happen anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my aunt brought up a, a video she watched over Christmas sitting down in Kansas was from 1989. And it had uh, my aunt while she was still married uh, at that time, her daughter, her husband, their first kid was out. Um, all the rest of the siblings from my father's side were there along with all of their kids. It was really the last time all of us got together. And that would have been 1989, 31 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a long time. That's a long time. Uh, well, I'm probably right there with you with, uh, not my immediate family, but like I'm first generation here. So I have, I have family sprinkled all over the world, Italy, Ireland, England, and then America is where, you know, uh, aunts, uncles, and, uh, first cousins are. You know, second cousins, yeah. I don't really care about them. They're usually right there with them. Uh, third cousins, we don't even know third cousins, really. But, geez, the last time all of us met in Ireland, there was 43 first cousins, by the way, <laughs> and uh, out of 11 kids. And it was, I believe it was 1985 was the last wow. time. Yeah. So no, for my yeah, parent, no. grandparents' 50th wedding anniversary. Yep, there you go. I was just going to say that. That's uh, the last big one that we had on my mom's side mm-hmm. would have been for my grandparents' 50th wedding anniversary as well. Yeah. But once our once yours and my grandparents' generation died off, they were kind of like the ones that, that organized that yeah. and put it together. Sure. Uh, and so it's, it's kind of a shame, though, because I, I missed my cousins and stuff like that. We were supposed to actually have a mini reunion on the Irish side this past uh, August for my cousin in Chicago, he was getting married in Ireland and mm-hmm. everyone was going to go to the wedding and it was going to be a big old, you know, shindig in August. And of course COVID happened and he had to reschedule. I was literally just talking to my mom uh, right before the podcast, trying to set it up because they're getting married August 5th this year or 2021 in Ireland. And they're still not sure if it's going to happen. Oh, wow. So, Holy cow. But they will get married. It just might not happen in Ireland. I said, you know what? I'm done. I'm going to Ireland. I'm, I'm, I'm traveling. <laughs> I'm not waiting. Yeah. And, you know, 2021 is going to be the big mystery. Um, sure. We got two vaccine companies out now competing. The third you know, and one on the way. What's that? There's a third one on the way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so they're saying by April, it should be so mass produced and so out there uh, onto the, the worst case people that maybe possibly we're going to see a heavy die off, <clears throat> pardon the pun, heavy die off of the disease itself this time. Yeah. Um, so, and if so, will things return to normal? What is normal? I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't know. 
I don't know what the normal is. <laughs> but when it comes to PDR, I know that I, I thrive. I, I crave something normal. And I do get that every day when I work at Anson. I see yeah. technicians coming in on a daily basis, buying tools, running their business, ordering uh, tools, tools going out to, to uh, technicians all over the world. So you're out there working, guys. And I know you're working because I see... You know, you're buying tools. You're not buying tools just to stick, stick them in a corner and let them collect dust. So, uh, you know, and I kind of wonder, we see these stimulus checks come out and man, that last round hit and boy, we got a wave clean up here. So I'm kind of curious, you know, um, here we are. The argument is whether or not the government's going to release this next stimulus check. I'm kind of wondering if it does or are those of us in the auto reconditioning trades, you know, people get like the little bonus. They like to make stuff nice when they're sitting around. Yeah. They stare at their cars. They don't like them. I mean, we got a ton of, of stuff coming off of that. So I'm really open to see that again, if it goes through. Yeah. And I think that's from the research that I've done throughout the years, being a business owner, it doesn't matter if you're a PDR business owner or any business owner, those stimulus checks, they really rely on, on small businesses to go out and spend that money in my opinion you know so yeah. you know if we're getting it from customers they want us to go we're the ones stimulating the economy i think you know yeah. as a small yeah. business owner i i agree and that's why i think it's kind of foolhardy to uh shut down that that small business aspect you know there's uh a person can can take all the safeguards but man there's no way you can put 300 people in a walmart and say it's safer than 10 people in a family store no it's ridiculous it is it is uh, it's outrageous you know and i know i know the write-offs that i do and in the motivation like the the end of the year you see everyone buy tools at the end of the year to get those write-offs those are all important things that you need to do as a small business owner and you want to capitalize on those. And, you know, they're all write-offs. And there's a reason yeah. why those are write-offs for small business owners. And, and what the, the government knows what we're doing. It's not, we're not, they're loopholes. They're not, they're designed for us to be out there stimulating the economy. Buying that new MacBook Pro. Buying that new tool. Buying that new, you know, uh, 200 or three, two, two to $3,000, you know, hot box or whatever. Yeah, it, updating your equipment. Yeah. Um, it's it's all it's all much needed. I uh, I got to update my arms. <laughs> I'm beating on this uh, 39 year old Yamaha gas tank the last couple of days. Oh, that'll do it. And uh, yeah, I it wasn't really repairable. If it had been a car, I'd have told them no. But I thought I really wanted to get in and really try a gnarled up tank. I'm, it didn't come out good enough for me to charge the guy, but. Good God, I had sweat just pouring off of me while I was trying to wrench out. Yeah. Just, a, it, it was a grapefruit sized tent in the side of a Yamaha gas tank. So, but you learned from it though. That's a big reason why I did it. The guy, his dad bought him this motorcycle brand new in 1981 when he was a kid. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. His son knocked it over in the garage and dented the tank. Oh, so, I really wanted to see if I could save this thing for sure. one and learn, you know, it was, the paint was blown off in a couple of spots already. Yeah. And he's probably going to be ecstatic and put it on the bike and be happy with it. But I'm not happy enough with how it looks to charge anybody for the work. But I did learn a ton about the motorcycle tools, uh, the different techniques. I mean, motorcycle, man, that'll make you feel like it a brand new dent tech all over again. It does. It really does. <laughs> Can't find your tip poking it like crazy pickle marks. Yeah. You know what? It's like a, a self-induced torture. It really is. You know, and, and sometimes I craved it. It's like, Oh, I got a tank. I get to like sit there and like, it's like people are addictive to addicted to working out. Right. Yeah, <laughs> whatever it is, the adrenaline rush or the like, the stress on your body, and then the recovery, the heart rate, whatever that is, I get all of that from doing a gas tank. <laughs> yeah, elevated yeah. heart pressure, <laughs> heart rate. I, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you know, after all of that, getting my butt whooped by a Yamaha, <laughs> I'm like, you know, 
my biggest hope for 2021 is maybe I'll do some more gas tanks. <laughs> uh, and I haven't gotten too, um, too wild and crazy and even trying to advertise it because I've been so crazy busy uh, just still with hail. So still with I, hail. That, yeah. And uh, I got, I'm taking this whole week off as well. Yeah. Uh, double reasons, basically uh, slow time. And then the, you know, just being safe around everybody. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, we're probably going to ramp up starting next week um, and right back to where we were. So, well, and then we got that little break coming up for MTE. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, everyone's like, is it happening? Is it happening? And by all intents and purposes, it's happening. We don't know any different. Uh, I have a call in the Sheldon right now. We're, we're trying to figure out the IMI class for, for, uh, for MTE, if it's going to happen and stuff like that, I, we're we're trying to coordinate that. I will be teaching a class on Thursday, uh, which will be uh, electric vehicle and uh, for scanning technology. I'm actually hoping you know John might help me, for, especially with the scanning technology. I know you're not certified yet, but uh, yeah, but we can talk about um, some of the scanning stuff. Uh, we'll have to see because I'm supposed to uh, talk on thursday as well we're going to redo that uh keith shapiro and i are going to discuss oh, estimating right. again and we're supposed to have two hours blocked off this time yeah well they blocked off two hours for me i'm probably not going to talk for two hours about scanning technology and uh <laughs> electric vehicles but whatever i do talk about it will be interesting and, and it's as well as you with, with estimating. Yeah yeah and we'll uh, we'll get that coordinated to see if i can slip in and talk uh, a lot of what I learned um, uh, the differences between that 808 and 906, for instance, yeah. um, and stuff that you and I discussed throughout the year as uh, as we were kind of going through them. Yeah, that it's definitely going to be the emerging stuff. I mean, you got this new uh, what is it C20 group that's kind of discussing estimating, scanning the legalities. The uh, you know, um, I sat through the first class with that with Jesse and. Boy, his eyes, he had never heard any of that stuff discussed. Yeah. Um, especially talking about Subarus and the eyesight and, and what it means to pull that plug one time. Mm. I'm so. actually interested in that as well. So, yeah, that's that's good stuff. I, I'm We're intending the for the Autel representative to be there as well with me. I... I don't know with COVID what's going to go on because everyone has different rules. Yeah. Uh, you know, everyone has personal things that they have to take care of. And I don't want to step on people's boundaries when it comes to personal things that have to do with it. I know where yeah. I stand with it and I can't invoke my stance on other people, but uh, you know, if someone's not comfortable going, they can't go. And you know, I got to honor that just like if yeah, I exactly. have to, like if we have to wear a mask, I have to honor that. That's someone else's yep. wishes. It's, I'm accepting the rules of where I'm going. Sure. And that's that's essentially it. And I'm not going to force anybody to live by my rules. But, you know, when I'm here, I live by my rules. I don't wear a mask. I support the businesses that say it's your choice, wear one or don't. You know, we're not going to force you either way. So we support those businesses and, and uh, make those choices. But, man, I... I just hope that it's a successful show. You know, the only thing that could ruin it, honestly, right now, is if they do a federal lockdown of the whole country. Right. And that's the only thing that could possibly do it. I don't see any other rules. I just don't see how they could mandate that. However, you look at Australia, you look at New Zealand. Australia has not had a COVID case in over a month now, I believe it was. New Zealand is going on like seven or eight weeks without a COVID case. So, I mean, there's something to it, but those are islands and they're smaller yeah. countries. You're talking about the United States with, uh, what are we up to, 400 million people now? <laughs> yeah, uh, just shy of 360 million. Yeah, so, so I don't see and, everyone cooperating and, with that. And an open society, you know, we've had a, a free society. There's only a handful of places that are ultimately locked down. But, I mean, that's uh, people to put South Dakota on the map like never before this last year. And essentially, um, a big reason behind that was people, we had a stellar tourist season. Yes. 
<laughs> I think it's all planned, dude. South Dakota we were- planned COVID to to uh, <laughs> up their spearfish tourist in Black Hills and Bla- whole else. Black Hills. Yeah. And I to know how much how heavy our tourist season one was the number of hail guys that called me that got cars from all over the country, East coast and West coast going, right. what the heck happened out there in South Dakota? Right. <laughs> so it looks like a bomb went off. Right. And that where, was where our, when this happened. Oh, South Dakota. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so. so yeah, it was, it was a crazy, crazy year for, for us. And, and, <laughs> Strangely enough, my hope is to repeat my 2020 season because I had a phenomenal 2020 season. It's very, very few and far between that I hear anyone come into Anson. Now, yeah, I won't make that general statement because Dallas, DFW area did not get their annual, you know, smoke show of a, a hailstorm. <laughs> no, but, you guys were quiet this year. Yeah, but. Very few and far between have I heard anyone complain about lack of work this year and lack of money. And I've heard, that's why I say that shut down of borders. And yeah. Borders. And not only that, but I think a lot of people rearrange their their thinking, their outlook on life, and maybe thinking, you know what? Maybe money is not the first goal of this all, you know? Maybe I should spend more time with my family. They've they've been forced to spend more time with their family, <laughs> right? <laughs> they, some of y'all needed to. <laughs> some of y'all needed to. Some of y'all like discovered that you know what? Maybe family's not for me, and I need a divorce. I know plenty of those guys too. That uh, yeah, you know, and that saddens me to the core because I I'm pro marriage, but yeah, uh, me too. You know, the, even my my son, I probably shouldn't say that, but any one of his friends. <laughs> It's like, man, couldn't you just wait till COVID's over and make that decision? Don't make yeah. harsh decisions during, you know, a pandemic for for crying out loud. It hasn't happened in a hundred years. <laughs> but yeah, you know, we're all yeah. forced to do, to shift, right? We had to shift this past year, and I'm hoping we do not have to shift as much in 2021. But I think we'll all be prepared for shifting if we have to. Yeah, if anything come out of this is people come up with a, a different plan. Uh, now, uniquely, my wife and I, we were used to being in like 300 square feet in yeah. lockdown at times. Exactly. Uh, you know, when we lived in our RV and we would be traveling, we could we would hit bad weather and we were trapped in ice storms for 48 hours right. inside an RV, you know, with the generator <laughs> running. So <laughs> for us, we're in our house. I'm out in the garage working on cars, uh, detailing, uh, ceramic coated. Even today, uh, my morning was filled with, I polished my shower doors yeah. for my walk-in shower and I ceramic coated the whole thing. Did you? Cause I got to do that too. Uh, yeah, the the water's a little bit hard here in Texas, and uh, compare. I had a soft water system on my house back in California, and I'm finding that I yeah. have to, my wife has to scrub to clean the shower now, where she didn't have to <laughs> with soft water. So I'm going to ceramic coat that sucker for. Her. Yeah, I had to. I had to literally polish the hard water spots off of the glass. Uh, that is the most work I've ever gone through to make clear glass. Yeah. I'll have you know, though, it went better than the Yamaha gas tank. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I'm sure she appreciates that more than the Yamaha guy yeah. will the gas tank. But we've and always. Then we'll find out. We'll find out the longevity of the ceramic coating. Yeah, I, you know what? Uh, we've always squeegeed our showers. So after a shower, you squeegee the glass off. But I can see yeah. where we don't squeegee is hard water stains. But yeah. with my old place back in, in California, we ceramic coated my black uh, stovetop. And mm-hmm. nothing stuck to it. Tomato sauce. And we're talking years of abuse. And it's still now, held, held up. Even where the the plates or the pans sat? Yeah. And everything did the, the heat had no effect on it. No effect on it at all. Oh, that's the ultimate tech tip for 2021. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it was black. It was a black cooktop. It was a nice Gen Air cooktop with like five or six, yeah, five burners. And yeah, that's the way ours was before we moved here and have gas. So yeah. now, and I mean, well, we had gas. Now we have electric here, and it's glass, which is a totally different animal that we're getting used to cooking with with electricity. It's interesting. That's what we always had in the past. My wife and I are on our first gas stove. Oh, we love gas. So, 
So, but we're getting used to electricity, so it's all good. So, all right, John. So, some of the things we're we're in twenty twenty one. We're looking at it in the eyes, and we're like, I think everyone's happy that twenty twenty is in the past. We're moving on, onward and upward. We're staying yeah. focused. We're staying positive. We're going to shift throughout the year if we have to shift and do this and do that and make do. Uh, I'm starting off the year with with MTE. You know, that's at the end of January. That's kind of how, that's where my calendar starts, my PDR calendar. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. You're going to be there. Majority of the guys we know are going to be there. Uh, majority of the, the companies are going to be there, the bigger companies at least. And I think, uh, you know, that's going to be, that's going to set the tone for the rest of the year for for the industry, for me, for, for what I want to do. Yeah. I kick-started my uh 2021 actually today i had a long conversation with a company in dallas uh, making plans that if they get smashed because nothing happened last year um and if i'm free to uh be down there i've already setting up plans and and keeping that so i'm already back to my old habits oh. um pre prefacing my year getting things ready and nice. being prepared so that when it does hail i'm ready to go in dallas though it can't be fort worth or down closer to me huh not that dallas is I far think, but we never go up to dallas that's like that's too ritzy for us i yeah i think it's actually going to be more central between dallas and fort worth but more on the north side okay that's so fine. I'm not I'm not exactly 100 percent sure where the new shop is because uh, well, I haven't looked it up. Well, but. as long as you need me on uh, nights and weekends to come and uh, I need some cash. I need a cash cash. I don't need <laughs> checks. That's one thing. When you leave the PDR <laughs> shop and not fixing dents for a living, you miss that cash. And it's amazing how quick you go through cash when you transfer to a different state <laughs> and start spending your cash. <laughs> on a couch on a bed on all sorts of stuff and say like, whoa where'd my cash go <laughs> yeah yeah build up your supply that was uh coming off the road my wife and i were like oh we have to go to a bank and get some cash yeah that that seems unnatural <laughs> i haven't used an atm no joke in probably 10 years and now i, I, I don't even know that I don't know the pin number of stating my cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's that's uh, I never get cash from an ATM machine. Yeah. That's probably been fifteen years or longer. Yeah, the, wow. I, I, I'm saying ten, but it might have been longer. But at least ten years, I, I have not. And now that I, you know, get a steady paycheck, I have to go to the ATM every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like being normal i know Dang. right cash back at albertons it's like really <laughs> would you like cash back sir look at my wallet shit yeah i do <laughs> <laughs> got like two singles in here <laughs> these be like freaking thousand dollars in cash in there now it's two singles now what do i do <laughs> well maybe dallas will will get hit you know you guys always get hurt hit early in the year i'd like yeah. to see it go um a little more central across Dallas and maybe actually make it over into that Fort Worth area. Yeah, that would um, be good. Fort Worth is such a nice area. It is. I, I oh, really okay. I really like where we live. Uh, Fort Worth is really cool. Arlington is really cool. I have a little bit of a hard time when I go up to Dallas. It's a little bit more uh, like Chicago or L.A. It's more urban. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. It's just different. Uh, I'm getting used to the little bit of country living that I do have. I like seeing people walking around with cowboy hats and cowboy boots. Go figure. <laughs> I went from I went from freaking board shorts and surfboards to cowboy boots and uh, cowboy hats. <laughs> cowboy hats. <laughs> <laughs> you even got your own. Now you had some boots. Did you get boots? I got boots. Yeah, I got boots about three. Yeah, about three weeks ago. Okay. I got now, did you buy some locally or did you order some online? No, I went into the boot shop Tacovas, which I guess is the good brand. Uh, if you watch that Yellowstone, is, I, I haven't think, made it into their boot shop. There, there's probably one up in your neck of the woods. So no, I I had to go to Wall, South Dakota. That's the only place that's got a good boot selection. Okay. They have like uh, five thousand boots up there. Well, I got some so. ostrich ones. You know, I was told that ostrich are the most comfortable. I slipped those suckers on, and it was like putting my hand into a, a you know a velvet glove. <laughs> so, 
So it was nice. Nice. I've nice. never, I, never I in think my mine life have I owned cowboy boots. <laughs> I haven't owned a pair since I was a little kid. And I think I got some Buffalo hide ones this time. Nice. So, well, what we do now, <laughs> like when people come from out of, out of state, you know, visiting us or, you know, we had a great time at Anson. We couldn't really post pictures of that stuff. Cause we didn't want to, you know, you know, I don't know. It, it <laughs> is at the cart. Yeah, exactly. You know, there, there's a pandemic going on, but uh, I have my little spots that I've found my, I, I'm, really big into dive bars i love dive bars and seeing that i'm out in the country there's there's quite a few dive bars around where i live where you know it's a blast it'll take you back to like 1987 yeah. and uh you know the girls have big old hair and they're smoking inside there's there's all sorts of stuff going on and it's all good stuff it's not bad stuff but it's it's it'll take you back to your youth and uh yeah we have a good time man and part of that is having having some cowboy boots on and two-stepping <laughs> <laughs> we my wife and i just drove by an old dive bar it was called the buck and gator up here uh-huh um, <laughs> all right i'll throw this uh, statue of limitations long past so i was 16 uh, I think one of the times I got kicked out of that bar. Now that bar is 70 miles from where I was living at the time. So we would, uh, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I had a couple of drinks in there. I've been kicked out of a lot of dive bars in this area yeah. as, a, as a youth. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's funny. Cause I mean, there's nothing more funny. I'm, ho- I'm waiting for the day. I'm hoping that you're drinking what, by the time you come to MTE, cause a, mm, I won't, ah, bummer. Cause I know you'll <laughs> I be had a- my appointment. You'd be a total it's, lightweight by then. <laughs> I will. I will. That'll be sad. I start, I should start in February is when I start tapering off the medication, but it's going to take three months to get me off the medication. Okay. All right. Well, one day we will drink again, Mr. Renstrom. <laughs> and if you ever have a chance, <laughs> a chance to drink with John, don't pass it up because <laughs> one of the funniest things times we've ever had was the first time i met you i think it was out here for uh it was an anson open house bonanza it's an open house oh my god we had such a good time in fort worth and i'm like who is this nutball he's freaking awesome and they had been touring around and you know you went to every uh uh distillery distillery we were hitting distilleries yeah i was all right to set the tone i was 16 shots into the, the distilleries by the time we all met up for supper for for, su- for more shots actually <laughs> I, I think i only had water at that bar yeah well it didn't matter if i was, was i was uh, yeah i was flying pretty high on that one <laughs> that was a fun night so if you ever get a chance to have a cocktail with mr Rentrum, take it up because your night will uh take a left turn really quick and you'll have a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm kind of looking forward to it we did uh, uh, uh some of you listeners got involved in this uh we did the bourbon exchange that started uh right uh right before christmas so was there. that for real and yeah i shipped out two different bottles and i got three bottles in return okay that's good and, and yeah so i got stuff from north carolina and and um one from South Dakota here because uh, you can't ship to South Dakota. Technically, can't ship to South Dakota, so companies won't. So one one guy couldn't ship me anything from a distillery that he had, so he sent me a, a gift card instead. Oh, okay. So I went and bought a bottle and then sent him a picture of what he purchased for me. Oh, that's cool. Very cool. We uh, uh yeah, I was looking at that. I didn't know if it was like a Ponzi scheme or something like that. It just didn't feel right, so I didn't get involved with it. Because as you're telling me, I'm, I'm looking at my cart, John, and I got at least 15 different bottles of different flavors over on my cart right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I could have right. used an extra 15. Yeah. <laughs> well... My wife and I have been sorting through our house because we're getting ready to finish the bar in the basement. And uh, we've been getting the last of stuff unpacked. And I still have 14 cases of liquor from around the country oh, wow. sealed up in my basement. So looking, well, looking forward to get off this medication. I'll tell you what, I am looking forward to you to get off the medication. And I'm hoping that myself and my wife come to visit you up there in South Dakota. 
Oh yeah. So not only do you have a beautiful life, wife and life, you have a beautiful uh, bourbon collection. So. <laughs> yes, it's uh no, it's from micro distilleries. Uh, all this talk about small business, um, that, all those cases of liquor are from small mom and pop distilleries from uh, Alaska, Japan, yeah. all over the, the country and, and from coast to coast oh, wow. here in uh, the mainland. So, yeah, I've got some great bottles that I'm really looking forward to cracking with friends. And it... Uh, that was, that was one of the things that I really missed about the traveling for hail is uh, my wife and I getting to do and experience all of that. So that was what the little bourbon exchange was really cool for. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Uh, and Jason Thrasher came up from Houston over the holidays and we went hunting one night and uh, he brought up this one from Yellow Rose? Were, Yellow Rose, Outlaw Bourbon Whiskey. And I guess it's it's distilled, pot distilled in Texas, handmade from 100% corn. And boy, is this stuff oaky and smelly yeah. and strong as hell. <laughs> and if, if you notice, there's not much gone from it. We had yeah. to stop drinking it because we were getting really drunk. <laughs> that's what's neat when you go go see that as well you know i can buy a bottle of jack daniels or jim beam anywhere yeah uh, you know find me something unique support a small business yeah exactly it's kind of learn an interesting story exactly i have i have had some good parties in distilleries i've had to sit around at a few of them actually helped uh proof down and and learn a lot about distilling while attempting to sober up so that I could legally drive home. <laughs> well, you were supposed to open up a distillery. I thought that was the idea in South Dakota. You and your wife were going to partake in uh, opening up a distillery up there. I still have all the equipment. Once I got sick and started on the medication, it was like kind of pointless when you can't. <laughs> Part of the, the fun of having your distillery is tasting, tasting the product and, sure. and uh, knowing when it's matured. So, And licensing is a bear to do. Um, and in fact, one the bottles that I sent out to a couple of people came from a local distillery in pure South Dakota. Huh. It's called Bickering Brothers. And uh, when we went up there, got to learn and meet them. Our ex-governor was one of the ones that started that, huh. Mike Rounds. And it's the Rounds Brothers. And how it became legal to distill alcohol in South Dakota was Michael Rounds wanted to open a dang distillery. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> so they changed the law so you can open a distillery in south dakota sounds about right so, so that still goes on in the world yep that's good stuff yeah well listen we've gone left right we've talked a little bit about pdr and we've talked a lot about whiskey we've talked a lot about family and everything else and uh you know we we've been talking to you for about 40 minutes here and i think we're going to give you a break this week and maybe come back next week john with an actual topic about pdr what do you think that would, that would probably be a good idea everybody will be back to pushing so it'd be it'll be time yeah and it's the holidays and this is you know what this is our holiday show john without the other two knuckleheads yeah happy new year happy new year <laughs> hey you know what john What's that? What do you got to say to our customers? Customers. <laughs> what do you got to say to our listeners? I'm sitting here drinking TX whiskey. <laughs> I say don't do stupid stuff uh, and hope you have a great 2021. And I say keep it stiff and have an exceptional 2021. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening, guys. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all the industry and tool-related news every week. Visit AnsonPDR.com for the largest selection of just about all your PDR tools, where you'll find hog glue and hog tabs. 